Linda Cuisine, and I'm 62 years young. I am Jill Kirkwood, and I'm 58 years young, and we are the 60s Chicks. Hi, everyone. Hi, Linda. Hi, Jill. Well, and welcome to all of you. If things are looking a little fishy today or a little bit different, it's because Jill, my little Jilly Bean, is at her home in Arkansas. So instead of being right next to me, sadly, side by side, I am tapping into her beauty and her consciousness via technology. And, and it, hi, right darling. Back <laughs> right back at you. So yeah, welcome to the jungle. Isn't there a song? Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> so welcome here. Yeah, and I miss everyone. I miss you, Linda. But right. today's show is going to be fun, right? Yeah, and aren't they all? Hey, it's just yeah. a reason to hang out with you. I know it's a reason to hang out with all of you as well. So today we are debunking myths, both with health and beauty. Yes. Yeah. Yep. We're going to do two each, two, two of the biggies. Love that. I'm super excited. So who wants to go first? You go first, Linda. Okay. All righty. I have a good one for you, <laughs> Jill. Is it true that we are what we eat? Hmm. Yes, so you better be careful what you eat for you will become that. I'm just saying. And no, 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 no. But stepping back at some levels, yes. Our body responds cellularly to the food we take in. Our organs, our organ systems all thrive on nutrient-dense food. And that's not to say you can't eat other things that aren't so good in moderation, but we are cumulative beings. So, you know, what we're eating today and even what we're thinking today is shaping us and who we are tomorrow and for the weeks and years to come. So we should be aware that things, the way we are right now, we started in the past, you know, a week ago, years ago, we started and we are here now. But as I'm saying this and I'm looking at your face, I'm thinking you are eating something that you're worried about becoming because I know you. What is it, Linda? Busted. Yes, because I have suddenly become addicted to these pork rinds and if the saying <laughs> that we are what we eat it would clearly explain why this is exactly what my thighs look like uh cellulite ridden um crackled so uh yeah uh, i'm doomed <laughs> oh, no, no, no. i'm sure who is right now eating a celery stick and and a carrot yeah <laughs> i do eat those but you know i do eat pizza and other things we'll get into all that stuff later but linda i would let you know but you would make a really cute little piglet <laughs> and i'll let you know if you start growing little pig nose yeah right? please do I, I feel the tail kind of coming right now so yeah let me know if there's other outward signs you put a little bow on that <laughs> but no so you you will not become in a sense what you eat literally but you will contribute to your well-being in the long term so my turn for you okay um do we need to wear sunscreen even if the sun is not shining miss linda a question then back at you jill do bears shit in the woods <laughs> yeah, you know what we do and in my front yard our front yard here for sure Which yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes, my darling and my darlings, we do need to wear sunscreen, even if it seems that the sun is not shining because the sun is still up there. And exactly like Jill just said, sadly, it is all accumulative. So unfortunately, the damage that we are seeing on our face today is something that we probably should have addressed a long time ago in back in the days when we were teenagers and slathering on the baby oil and browning ourselves to a crisp like this instead of taking care of our bodies. I do want to just point out though a little um, kind of an interesting fact that a 50 SPF is 98% effective in keeping out the damaging rays of the sun. However, a 100 bumps that up only by 1%. So not will it be 98, it'll be 99. However, it also can be damaging to your skin because an SPF 100, as Jill had shared, um, actually caused her to get a, a bad burn, like a chemical burn, right, Jill? Absolutely, yeah, it was a, a 
SPF actually was an SPF 50 around the oh, eyes wow. okay. and it caused a burn and my eyes swelled up and the skin was red and it started to peel. So my dermatologist said, no, nah, you're too sensitive for that. So I never use anything higher than 30, but it's striking Linda that from an SPF 50 to an SPF 100, it's only 1%. Right. And I almost think it's kind of like a marketing ploy to be honest, because wow. the, I mean, I'm not a numbers gal, you would be the numbers gal, but it's certainly that the numbers don't jive. But my suggestion then don't waste your money on anything over 50. To be honest, anything between a 30 and a 50, if applied properly is is fine. Okay, and we need to apply this frequently depending on the conditions. Yeah. You are absolutely right. If you are someone like Jill who works out and is sweating in the sun, that's not going to be an issue for me. Trust <laughs> me on that one. You would need to reapply it. But if you're also at the pool or at the beach and jumping in and out of the water, you would need to reapply. Oh, good to know. I know that I need to take better care of my hands. Absolutely. Absolutely. We don't want those freckly hands. I did not take care of the tips of my ears and I have very wrinkly ear tips and they're freckly. I was going to mention those ears. I'm like, that's just disgusting, Linda. Those wrinkly ear tips. That's why I've got this long hair going on. I got to hide those ear tips. <laughs> well, thank you, Linda. And you're well, beautiful. You are welcome. Okay, I got one, <laughs> one, one down and dirty one for you, literally. Can Excellent. Catch... <laughs> Jill, can we catch something from a toilet seat? Huh. So Linda, you're really into toilet seats. <laughs> Aren't I? It is like a weird, I think it's because I have five grandkids in various stages of toilet training. And I just, it, it's like locked in my brain. I have got toilet of the brain. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer hard and fast is no. I know that people are concerned if they can catch STDs or anything like that on the toilet seat. Absolutely not. I mean, you can't even get pregnant, Linda, from a toilet seat. Some people wonder that. I, mean, I know. Kind of I was going to use that as my excuse if, as a teenager, I ever got pregnant. I was going to say, no, no, I am a virgin, Mom. It, it's a, the toilet seat. The toilet oh, did I would, it. I would have loved to seen your offspring from that one. <laughs> but the, I do have they obviously would have taken all after his side of the family. <laughs> Of course, but I do want to throw caution to the wind. In a very rare situation, there has been staff uh, reported. That's very rare, very rare. But what you need to be more concerned about is fecal matter. I mean, we're talking about poop here. We're going to be honest. You know, we're not, you know, we're raw about this. I mean, when people wipe, sometimes they get it on their hands and then they touch that little knob to get out and then they're pulling the door open and then they're, you really want to make sure before you leave any bathroom anywhere to thoroughly wash your hands. If we haven't learned that enough in the past 15 months, having clean hands under the nails, so important. I mean, Linda, oh, very nice, Linda. That's my doctor. Uh... <laughs> but you wouldn't want to put your hand inside a pork grind snack bag without washing them after leaving a public restaurant. No, no, this is true. This is true. Clearly, she does not want me eating these pork rinds because now she's fine anyway. I mean, you know, I was a vegetarian for 20 years and I still have like, Ooh, and we'll talk about that later. But I have one more question for you. Okay. It's regarding showers and I see in showers um, those wooden handled sticks with the uh, brushes and the loofahs on them and some of them are a little gnarly looking and how often do we need to change those? Well way more often than anyone would ever guess. I mean for goodness sakes people hang on to those disgusting things for a millennia well, speaking of that, I, you, <laughs> when I house sat for you, there was one hanging in there. And then like the month later or two months <laughs> later, <laughs> you're, you're no, not no. yours. The dog did it. No, not yeah. mine. Not mine at all. Um, I actually dry brush before a shower. I never use a brush in the shower. I, I dry brush and we'll oh, talk perfect. about that. That's the, and that yeah. we definitely need to talk about that on another show. That that's a great subject. So to Jill's sure. point, um, Lupa's hanging in the shower. My beloveds, get rid of those things after like two or three weeks. They are just nothing but a host for disgusting, oh my gosh, like fungus and mold and bacteria. So you don't want to just be scrubbing yourself and uh, I mean, just, just think about it. it. It looks benign hanging there on that little rope or nestled there with your little cute soaps, but uh, it, it, can, it can be a dangerous 
a dangerous Ooh. thing. If you've got the plastic kind, Jillian, you know, those are the ones that almost look like a kitchen scrubber sometimes, those colorful nylon, and they basically just like a little ball. Those need to be tossed. They could last about two or three months, but the natural lupa sponges need to be tossed about two or three weeks into it. And be really careful if you're ever using a lupa for your face. They are highly abrasive, first of all. I'm fine on your body, because like Jill said, with doing a dry brush, but if you use it on your face and you've got a breakout, it will, it could possibly scratch off that protective layer. And then that bacteria that's in the lupa is going to get inside and just, you know, create havoc and potentially lead to, to an infection. So now get oh, away, yeah. away from the face, Back yeah, that's away not really from good. the face. But you still shouldn't use the dirty ones on your body either. No, right? no. After two or three weeks. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's exactly what I'm saying. Don't do it on your face. Have- Just, uh, you know, watch, wash the cooch. No, no, do not throw those things away. Watch the cooch. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I love you. <laughs> Well, Linda, thank you for clearing that up. Yes, well, and thank you for joining us um, as we do uh, this little, I mean, I'm sure everyone's all Zoomed out, but hey, it, it, we're all family here. So it's not going away, by the way. It's not going away, Zoom. It's bringing oh. everybody together. So it yay. It is. Well, that's why I get to hang out with you for an entire day trying to do an eight-minute yeah. segment. <laughs> we need to hire a five-year-old. We should go to a little kindergarten <laughs> class and hire a five-year-old. Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, we love you. Well, we love yeah. you. And Jill, I love you. And remember, well, it's got to be wine o'clock somewhere. It is. So we say wine a little and, and laugh a lot. Until laugh. next time. Thanks. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.